Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Christian Diaz. Um, I'm Panamanian. Uh, I uh, was born and raised there and been uh, working at the Stem Cell Institute uh, since last year. Uh, I did my medical training in Panama and uh, I'm very glad and very proud to be, to have been given the opportunity to work here because I've seen amazing things and as I think uh, you'll gather from all these presentations, um, it's a growing field and, and we're very, very enthused and very happy about the results that we've been seeing. I'm gonna talk about um, demystifying the stem cell treatment because much like many of, <clears throat> uh, of you, you know, you've read about stem cell treatment, you've seen you know, titles and headlines all over the place, but really you don't know what that entails. I was, I was the same way, uh, you know, coming out of med school, we, we didn't talk about stem cell treatment or stem cells as therapies, um, or at least they're in their very you know, early stages, but um, now we're treating uh, patients with stem cells in, uh, in, in Panama, specifically mesenchymal stem cells, and I think you should know exactly what that entails um, and for certain conditions. I'm gonna talk about specifically autism and multiple sclerosis. So this is uh, Panama, and this is the building where the, the clinic's at. Um, like Dr. Reardon mentioned, we're, we're in the tallest building in, on the coastline there, and, and this is the view. Um, let me see if I got a pointer. That's the view from, from, the, from the clinic, actually from one of the consultation rooms right here. Um, and that's a picture that I took of the skyline which if you meet any Panamanian, you'll, you'll know we're really proud of our small, small little country because we're uh, thriving and very excited to always share pictures of our city because it's beautiful, quite honestly. This is the entrance to the clinic, uh, just so you get a little bit familiarized with, you know, with the clinic. I know going down to Panama for uh, stem cell therapy can be a little bit daunting or scary. You don't know where you're going. So um, this is a, a picture from the, you know, the waiting room and uh, the front desk. This is where some, you know, our patients will be sitting or sitting uh, while they're waiting for us to treat them. This is some of the staff there at the clinic. Um, this, is, this is specifically our medical staff. Um, we have physicians that have been working with the Stem Cell Institute uh, for about 10 years. And you have myself, which I've been there since last year. Um, and we're all very glad to, to, to meet our patients and see follow-up patients because I think, quite frankly, those are the most exciting patients to see because we see, um, we get to hear from them firsthand, you know, what the results have been and work with them. This is a picture of uh, one of our consultation rooms, and in my opinion, the prettiest consultation room. It's, it has an incredible view. So while you're doing these IV infusions, um, like Dr. Reardon mentioned, you know, can take with evaluation, blood work, and, uh, and IV infusions can take anywhere from 30 minutes to around 30 to 40 minutes. Well, you want to have a nice view, and quite frankly, I enjoy the view as well. We, you know, uh, me and the patients get to talk and kind of relax and not be so anxious about what's, you know, what's going to happen for the next uh, couple of days because, again, uh, it can be a little bit daunting or scary to think that you're going to Panama for IV infusion of stem cells. So we want to. Um, let you know and we, uh, and understand how you know how safe and how friendly everyone is there, and um, and on, you know in the meantime have a nice view while you're getting your infusion. So I'm going to talk about autism spectrum disorder, and um, you know it's a, it's a very complicated condition. I can tell you um, also firsthand working at the clinic, it's a condition that um, you know we're we're hearing about more often. Uh, we're um, there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of doubts. Trust me, we have them as well as physicians, as doctors in the medical community globally. Have a lot of questions about autism spectrum disorder, exactly you know, what the causes are uh, and, and, and what the environmental triggers may be or you know, what the etiology is. Um, but we know as far as treatments now for autism, there are many, you know, many uh, approaches. Um, social skills training, early in intensive uh, behavior therapy, uh, applied behavior analysis, speech therapy, occupational therapy, psycho, uh, psychotropic drugs, uh, and alternative treatments and supplements, all of which, trust me, all of our patients uh, and their parents have, have done and do, and we think that is great because most of these um, 
cognitive training uh, programs we actually encourage our parents to, con to do before coming and continue doing after they leave. Um, I, I try to tell patients and their, and their parents um, that these stem cell therapies, they should see them as also as supplemental to, to, to what their children are doing uh, as far as cognitive training uh, and stimulus back home. So our stem cell therapy is based upon uh, three criteria or, or, or three advantages that we know that these mes mesenchymal stem cells do for the patients. Um, they release anti-inflammatory drugs they, um, over an extended amount of time. They have a paracrine effect. Dr. Reardon talked beautifully more than I could ever um, you know, detail to you right now about the paracrine effect and the secretome and, and, and the exosomes that are released by these stem cells. And the immune modulatory effect as well, uh, we believe, plays a, a, a big part in uh, treating or, or the results seen by these patients. So also to you know, emphasize on what Dr. Reardon mentioned, um, we're not alone in, you know, in, in, in assuming that mesenchymal stem cells are, are uh, a viable treatment option for autism. There are many studies going out, and these are just two titles that have caught my eye ever since I've been working there because, uh, uh, you know, quite frankly, there's little information about, um, or there, I, I thought there was little information about you know, treating autism, but we see now that there's cellular therapies that are, that are being developed or studied for autism. And these are some of them, not, these aren't ours, but these are some of them that are going on globally. And um, this is, and, uh, or will be, the title to this, one of the studies that, that's being done, or that was, that was done at the Stem Cell Institute in Panama, which is uh, currently being peer reviewed and submitted to the journal, um, and is soon to be published. Trust me, I'm as excited to read, it, read about it in a journal as, as you are, so keep an eye out for that, and I think uh, the, you know, we'll, we'll make that information available to you when it is. <clears throat> So what is treatment like at our clinic? Uh, you know, what, what does a, the, the treatment week look f like for a patient with autism and his family? Um, so we assign patients before they come uh, to the ASD protocol. Any of the, of the, of the four variants, depending on their, on their weight and their height and their age, um, the, on, that, on that basis, we select for the dosages that, that we give those patients. Um, again, we use mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, derived from the umbilical cord of healthy pregnancies. Um, and the ASD protocol calls for the first day, uh, our patients step in with their, with their parents for, whoops, sorry. Cable issues, there. There, that's good. Um, yeah, our first day, uh, parents step in with their patient. Um, we know a little bit about them already from the applications. We've asked some critical questions that uh, we feel are important to know before you know, we screen them. Uh, but the first day, we want to hear more about that. We want to. We have an hour with our patients to hear about you know specifics of their diagnosis, when they were diagnosed, uh, how how they were diagnosed, and by whom, what type of uh, cognitive uh, treatments they've been receiving because we, again, we believe that's very important going forward after treatment as well. And we do a, a blood work panel on all our patients. Um, we do a complete blood count. We, we do an infectious disease panel and we do uh, blood chemistries, which we check uh, on Monday, Monday night, Monday afternoon to see that everything's right to start the treatments on the next day. So on, this, on, the, on the next days, your second to fifth day um, in Panama for treatment, uh, patients will, will be evaluated. They, they'll have physical examination and they'll have vital signs measured before treatment. Um, I always tell parents, you know, mostly with, with these patients, um, to do some preconditioning and, and have the child know that uh, or understand to a certain degree that you know we're going to be sitting in a consultation room. Nobody likes going to the doctor, especially these kids, um, and nobody likes seeing all of us in white coats and with needles. So some preconditioning is is warranted, and uh, we work with the with the children. Our nursing staff is very good at uh, at dealing with uh, um, you know lowering anxiety for before these treatments. 
and doing the IV, uh, the IV punctures as painlessly and as uh, effortlessly as possible. Anyways, we administer uh, either, depending on what, on what um, protocol they're assigned to, 40, 60, 80, or 100 million mesenchymal stem cells throughout the week, we, we divide those doses in four days. Um, so to be clear, for example, if the patient is on the uh, autism 40 million mesenchymal stem cell protocol, they receive 10, mesenchymal, uh, 10 million mesenchymal stem cells per day for four days. Um, and so we measure the vital signs before and after, and we make sure that everything's okay. That's part of our job as the uh, treating physicians is to make sure that the patient is doing well. During, before, during, and after the treatments, um, we do have a physician on call 24-7 every single day of the week because we have so many patients, you know, hospital, not hospitalized, but in our hotel facilities that are just an elevator right away from us. Um, we feel we have, a, we have a phone. We feel it's very important to uh, have direct communication with them. If anything should arise, we're there for them. Um, on the fifth day, we do treatment as well, and we talk to parents. We give them their lab results back. We go over the results as far as you know, the safety of the treatment, and we, we, dis, we discharge patients with information on the amount of cells that they've received and each day that they've received them and where they've, where they've had their IV lines placed. The most, for, the most important part of all of this is, is the follow-up. And quite frankly, that's, you know, that's what I'm most excited to talk to you about because uh, the follow-up is what tells us how these patients are doing afterward. So we have a team uh, led by a physician, MD, and her, and her staff that follows up with patients one month after they leave and every three months until a year goes by. Um, they do the ATEX testing and they talk with patients to see if there's any, any relevant new medical findings or anything associated to the treatment that they are uh, willing to disclose with us. And I'll show you some of the information from our patient registry uh, from the patients that were treated from April to December 2018 and followed up, for a six, you know, followed up, followed up successfully for six months. Um, we saw that there are significant improvements, and I'm very excited, again, to share them with you. We did this by measuring their ATEX scores abroad. Obviously, there's a big limitation in the fact that, you know, we're in Panama. Some of our patients aren't. And so, you know, we're, we're not going to call you back to just to have it, do an ATEX uh, score testing. So we, we, we tell the parents to, to, to run the ATEX, uh, and if they have any doubts about that, we have uh, personnel to to really explain that to them because we want the most important, you know, the, the most relevant information coming out of those patients. And this study specifically um, compared the baseline, so the initial ATEX scores that we did on the, on the patients before coming um, and six months later. So in that pool of patients, you know, we had 47 patients, 192 treatments a mean age of 7.6 years old for each patient, uh, for the patients, an age range of uh, about three years old to 26 years old, um, mostly males, 87.2% uh, of them males, as we know, autism affects uh, four to one males to females, um, and that's reflected upon you know, the patients that we gathered here. Females, 12.8%. All receive, well, receiving a, an average dose of 15.75 million uh, human umbilical cord, mes uh, human umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, um, and they were followed up with ATEX scores six months later. So this is some of the the, the information that was obtained from that from the ATEX score that measures uh, the four <clears throat> four variables. Um, specifically speech, sociability, awareness, and behavior. We saw that behavior had an important, very significantly, uh, signif uh, statistically significant improvement. And overall, the, the, the results were, were, were very eye-opening. Out, uh, out of those patients, the 192 treatments, 
going back to what Dr. Reardon was mentioning, the adverse events. Adverse events it sounds like it sounds like scary words, but they they really they really aren't. Mostly, what they were characterized by were psychomotor hyperactivity, which we considered to be a mild adverse event, uh, restlessness, warm skin, fatigue, and anxiety. And as you can see, uh, we had a total of 12 adverse events in 192 treatments. That's about 6.25%. Um, of, mild of mild intensity and the duration was 0.33 days uh, ergo eight, eight hours uh, of, of these mostly mostly the psychomotor hyperactivity is what, what uh, we saw. So going forward uh, I'm going to talk now about multiple sclerosis and the protocol that we follow back in Panama for treating multiple sclerosis. So similar to, to autism, um, multiple sclerosis has some treatments that are available now. And, and many of our patients, if, if, not, uh, if not all of them, are on many of these uh, medications for treating their multiple sclerosis. Immune, suppo Im immune suppressive treatments, steroids, and drug targeting specific, uh, drugs that target specific symptoms. Stem cell therapy, again, is, is a new treatment that you know, we're looking at that has the capacity to um, attack the condition in three ways, by doing immune modulation, uh, secreting anti-inflammatories, and it has a regenerative uh, capacity. So we're not isolated. Again, to, to show you some of the studies that have been going on and, and are going on as far as multiple sclerosis and cellular, cellular therapy. These are some, you know, two titles that pop out to me, but these are a lot of the study, these are numbers showing a lot of the studies that, that are going on worldwide. So we're very excited to be part of that. This is the, stem, this is the, the, the paper that was published in March of 2018 by the Stem Cell Institute in Panama. Uh, we're very proud of it because it, quite frankly, has very good, ha showed very good results and, and, and with, a, with, a, with a product that is, ver is, real, is harmless and very, very effective. So what does treatment for MS at our uh, clinic look like? Again, our first days, and if you ask any of the physicians or my colleagues at the clinic, they'll ask you, Mondays are our heaviest days because Mondays we have an hour with each patient for evaluation and blood work. And again, similar to, to uh, with our autism patients, with our multiple sclerosis, we, we already, we have screened you, we have screened the patients, but we wanna know, we wanna know more details. Uh, we wanna extrapolate the most information we can from them to be able to follow them up uh, as best we can, you know, asking them, are the, the team of physicians, uh, the team led by a physician that follows up with patients are very um, aware of what we extrapolate, what we get, for, what we gather from the patients on the first evaluation. And going forward, a month, three months, six months, and 12 months after treatment, they're going to ask those specific questions again and again. So the first day is very important for us. Again, we do blood work, which is routine. We run it on all of our patients, and we check it before we start any treatment. The, the multiple sclerosis protocol calls for three days of uh, IV infusions, um, 40, receiving 40 million IV human umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells per day. And so for a total of 120 million mesenchymal stem cells, plus two days where we'll, we'll do some um, perilymphatic abdominal fat uh, injections with the same mesenchymal stem cell product that, that contains three million mesenchymal stem cells each. Sorry, that's a little bit confusing, but bottom line is patients receive a total of 120 million mesenchymal stem cells plus 12 million um, mesenchymal stem cells and the perilymphatic injections. And we explained that a little bit on the first day because again, uh, the first day of evaluation, patients are very anxious, very nervous. We always see, uh, we, always, we never diagnose hypertension, but we always see our patients are a little bit, have a elevated blood pressure because, you know, it is, it, it can be scary, but we, we like to take the time and explain the next three days how, how they're gonna go for that. 
Um, other than the IV infusions at the clinic, we encourage our patients to do physical therapy. We encourage them to do physical therapy before coming and after leaving. But uh, a good way for us to get the ball rolling on some of the patients that aren't on physical therapy or have not done any type of uh, treatment, uh, physical treatment, we start them, we, we um, take them to BioFit, which is one of our physical therapy locations, and, and they do two days of that. So from uh, April to December 2018, 29 patients were followed up uh, as far as, you know, for our multiple sclerosis protocol. We delivered 90 treatments, and uh, the, mean age, the mean age being 46.3 years old, and mostly, as you can see, well, about 50-50, but mostly females, you can see, and the average dose on a single dose for all those patients was about 30, was 37 million mesenchymal stem cells. These are some of the results from the uh, MS, MS quality of life survey that the follow-up team sends patients a month, three months, six months, and 12 months after treatment. Um, and as you can see, there are some very important to us, very important uh, statistically significant results, mostly um, cognition and health changes that to us, you know, we, we, we on, on the, not, not for this, but on the study, we do measure the EDSS, um, and we, we do do some other testings and, and, and um, magnetic resonance imaging to see you know, what changes there have been. Obviously, um, we have a, the, the study was a little bit more controlled, and we were able to measure more things when we have the patients with us. But this is just derived from patients that have, been, that have come and gone from the clinic. So as far as adverse events for those patients with the MS protocol, um, we had a total of 17 adverse events in 90 treatments. That's 18.9%. And again, adverse events may sound scary, but they're, they were all 100% of mild intensity, things that nothing that we cannot control as we're there. That's why we have a physician on call. Things like mostly fatigue, um, and we go and we explain that on the first day, um, headaches, uh, pain in extremities, decreased appetite, musculoskeletal stiffness, myositis, or pyrexia. And these are very mild that usually they're, they're very short-lived and um, usually last less than a day. I tell patients, you know, if you're going to expect any of these symptoms, um, expect them within the first 30 minutes after the infusions to about six to eight hours after the infusions. Um, usually after that, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's uncommon to see these reactions, you know, 24 hours later. So the, the paper that I showed you earlier, that we're very proud of, um, showed these results. And um, I think it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, uh, as a physician and just as a human being that, you know, we have uh, alternatives to some treatments that, that can be detrimental to the health, you know, very effective treatments that exist thus far for MS, but can be very detrimental in, in some cases. And so, we, you know, to me it's exciting to know that there's, there, there's another option and uh, that stem cells is that option. So that study showed that there were no serious adverse, adverse events reported. Um, improvements in the EDSS scores were, were evident uh, and were statistically significant. Um, there were improvements such as bl bladder, bowel, and sexual dysfunction control, which were also uh, statistically significant. Improvements in non-dominant hand average scores for uh, nine-hole nine peg testing. And, um, and perspective of positive health change and improvement of quality of life, which we tested through um, the surveys. This is the EDSS, the disability score that was run on those patients for that study. And there's a, a, an, an, um, an important uh, uh, improvement, you know, one year after treatment. So these numbers uh, are very exciting to all of us. And the nine-hole peg test as well uh, improved. There was a statistically significant improvement in those, in those scores, both for dominant and non-dominant hands. And finally, for that, for that paper, um, 
it was evidenced in, in, in some resonance imaging that, um, that there was elimination or regression of some of the, the central, uh, central nervous system lesions, which to me is something that nobody in med school would have ever told me could happen. And I think that is mind blowing. And so I think, you know, it's, it's, it's something to pay attention to. And we want this to be everyone's story. Like Dr. Reardon said, you know, we, we, we're pushing for this. This is a, a patient you're, you're going to hear firsthand his testimony. He was here. He was in Panama recently, um, less than two months ago, and he was very happy to disclose uh, and, and give us uh, his testimony, which, quite frankly, similar to the autism patients, I enjoy a lot. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy seeing the patients that come up for follow-ups because they just they're just so rich in information that and, and clinical information that we can derive from them that shows us you know, what the effects of these stem cells are and, and what their efficacy is. Hello, so my name is uh, Ignas Kamalanskas. I come from Lithuania, and this is my second treatment here. So before the first treatment, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and it was secondary progressive stage. And I had tingling sensations in my hands, in my feet, loss of balance, I couldn't walk more than like a half a mile probably. If it was a hot day I would get really tired really fast and after the first treatment within a week I started seeing results. Uh, me and my girlfriend we went uh, abroad and it was a cold day and we just had to walk around the old town to be like a tourist and I noticed that I am having no symptoms whatsoever. I could walk around for it seems like an hour and we did. We walked around the whole old town, no issues at all. And then after that, gradually within the next year, I kept getting better and better. I used to have like a sharp pain in my left leg when I went to sleep. And then it completely gone away within like the first two, three weeks, no more pain. The tingling in the hands, it remained, but it is maybe slightly less. I noticed that my balance got better. Before I couldn't kneel on one leg to tie a shoe, and now I can do that without any issues. My walking distances have gotten better. Heat tolerance has gotten better as well. And I think that's about it. So it's exciting to, to, to hear stories like this. And, um, you know, we, we sit down on Mondays. If it's a follow-up treatment, patients come and, and are very excited to, to share with us, you know, how they've been doing after, after treatment uh, at, at, Pan at the Panama Stem Cell Institute. And, you know, this is just one of the stories. I feel fortunate because I get to hear these stories. Many patients aren't, uh, many, many doctors aren't exposed to, to, to cases like this. Um, and so I'm very excited, you know, on a Monday, I see a follow-up. I'm very excited to hear these patients' story or, or query them and ask them a lot about how they've been doing uh, over the past six months or a year. And then finally, you know, like, like I said, any Panamanian you'll meet will be very proud of their country and very excited to show you around. Um, these are just some images from Panama City where I was born and where I live. And uh, we're very excited of what's happening there as far as Stem Cell Institute and you know, our impact, that, the impact that we can make.